we talked last week about the importance of our confession. And I want to, I want to talk some more on that. There's some other things that God wants to bring out just as a little two-week thing uh, to make sure that you're talking right. Your, your tongue is your steering wheel. If you're living in lack, you can take your steering wheel, your tongue, and get back into a place of abundance. If you're living in sickness and disease, you can use your tongue to take your life back into God's will of health and healing. Your tongue is your problem, not ever people. Every one of our problems in this room is an inch below our nose. And if we, if we can get that right, then we can, we can change a lot. In our, as a matter of fact, go, this is where we're supposed to go. Third, uh, James chapter 3. Let's start there. James chapter 3. Hallelujah. I'll give you a, I'll, we're just going to kind of get a picture of this. Your words are so important. Because to walk by faith, to walk by faith, we have to constantly be hearing the word and getting revelation of it. And now we're believing the word in our heart. But that's not enough. To release our faith, we have to speak it out of our mouth. So this is why the word is never to depart from your mouth. You're to speak the word all the time, right? So in James chapter 3, in verse 2, it says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, or another way to say that, if, if you don't, if you don't mess up the way you're talking, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Now, the NIV translation brings out the Greek really well. For those of you who know me, it kind of pains me a little bit to say that, but sometimes they do it really well, I, so well Okay, I, I kind of tease people who have an NIV Bible, but I actually wrote the NIV version in my Bible, so I'll read it to you. It says, we all stumble in many ways. Is that true? That's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect and perfectly, or perfectly able to keep their whole body in check. Now think about what he's saying. In the King James Version, you're able to bridle your whole body. You're able to keep your body in check. Could, it, could that even mean that if I could speak what God's Word says, that, I mean, in the Greek, that word bridle also, also means bring, to, to bring under subjection. It literally means to change. So what if your kidney's not working right? And what if you start speaking to your kidney and saying, Jesus redeemed me from kidney problems. Now, kidney, I command you in the name of Jesus to work correctly. That you, there's no way you could not say that that's biblical. That's amazing. So your, your words... I ask the Holy Spirit to help me with my words. His response to me was, I don't have to. Your spirit will. You just, you just stay full of my word. In the Old Testament, David said, put a watch over my lips. The Holy Spirit says, I don't, I don't need to do that myself. You fill your heart with the word of God, and your spirit will do that. If you'll, if you'll put the word first in your life and reverence God and live your life for him and stop living your life for yourself. See, the reason, why we, the reason why we're not winning the world in America is Christians look like the world. They, they don't speak life. They judge people. They, their lifestyle is just like somebody who doesn't know God. But it's all because they don't really know who they are. Right? But have you ever noticed if you start working on your words... Man, at first, you'll start, 
you'll have to just confess. Okay, Lord, I don't, you know, you start going, okay, today I'm going to watch my words. And all of a sudden you're saying stuff and it'll, you'll hear it. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. No, Father, I don't believe that. I curse that word in Jesus' name. Right? You know where it says in Isaiah 54, every, every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you'll condemn it. Man, most of those tongues are going to be coming out of you. Right? You know, you say, oh, my leg's killing me. My back's killing me. This is driving me crazy. No. When you realize that you're a speaking spirit like your father, and, and we're not to speak idle words. We're to speak to bring spiritual law in motion. See, when I preach... This is not just a teaching moment. To be honest with you, it's even a prophetic moment. I'm, I'm teaching. The Holy Spirit is teaching all of us, but I'm also declaring things. I'm declaring our freedom. So these principalities and powers, we're saying no. So it's real interesting. When you speak in your life, you're not just speaking just in your life, but you're, you're declaring things and God is backing it up because it's his word and he'll bring his power and his presence into that scene and start changing things. So you got to know this. You're able to bridle your whole body. Another example of this is in Psalm 103. Go to Psalm 103 and we're going to look at verse 5. Hallelujah. Psalm 103. I believe it's verse 5. Yes, it is. Now, this is, it starts out where David's going, bless the Lord, O my soul, and, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And then he starts listing his benefits. The first one, verse 3, who forgives all of my iniquities, who heals all of my diseases. That's pretty good who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I am crowned with that. But then it says in verse 5, who satisfies thy mouth, or who satisfies my mouth with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. How is my youth going to be renewed like the eagle? By speaking out of my mouth what God tells me to say. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth will be renewed like the eagle. When a golden eagle gets sick, it will go up to an, uh, a place where no other animals can go, way up on a a high mountain, a cliff area where, where it's inaccessible, and that, that golden eagle will lay, and a golden eagle has, they have several different layers of, of eyelids, so they could look directly into the sun, and he will lay on his back with his, all his feathers just out, just lay there and look at the sun. And what happens, that's how his, his, he gets renewed to where now he comes back to full strength, and then he goes again. And eagles are pretty cool. You know, a golden eagle, when he's, when he's standing, you know, so many thousands of feet in the air on some, on some cliff or something, he sees a storm coming. He never runs from a storm. Also, he's not like other animals. He doesn't, he doesn't look and go, oh, a rabbit. I think I'll eat that rabbit. No, nope. he, he literally decides what he's going to eat. And if he sees other things that he could easily get, but he decided he's going to eat something else, he's very picky about what he eats. As the same way a Christian should be very picky about what they eat, right? But then what he'll do is the storm that comes, all, you'll see he'll be watching all these animals taking shelter, all the birds taking shelter, but he just stands there. And then the storm comes and, and their, their wings have these, they have locks in them so he could lock his wings in an open position. And he'll mount up. And, and he'll go, he'll jump right into the storm. And the storm will start, the, the draft of the storm will start taking him up until he bursts through the clouds and is above the storm. Will mount up with wings as eagles. 
In other words, New Testament, you'll humble yourself under the mighty hand of God by casting the whole of your care on him, and he will lift you up. He'll exalt you above the circumstances. That's just like a, a commercial break. But isn't that cool? But, but see, you've got to understand the God of heaven in the person of the Holy Spirit who's in you today wants to give you what to say in every situation of your life. When you're reading the word, when a scripture jumps out, today if I'm preaching and a scripture jumps out, that's the Holy Spirit that's going, I want you to start meditating in this scripture. Do you see why if you're trying to figure out your life, good luck with that, you're never going to do it. You might guess right once in a while, but to figure out your life, you got to take your eyes off your life. Didn't God say to live, you got to die? So God loves it when you have all this stuff going on, you got all these deadlines coming up, and you take your eyes off of it all and put it on Jesus and just thank him that it's all worked out. And then pretty soon, he starts giving you what to say and what you don't realize when you're speaking the word of God, he's just taking your life and he's just, he's just moving you right in the right place. And how do you know it? Desires start coming up. And all of a sudden, you're like, man, I just really desire this. And then pretty soon, some things start working out over time that where this, this makes sense. Because sometimes where God's leading you might seem like you're going backwards, but you're never going backwards with him. The path of the righteous is increase. Oh, you might think you're going backwards, but if you're following him, you're never going backwards. Because, you know, sometimes he'll have you going this way, and you're going, man, it seems like I'm going backwards. And then all of a sudden, boom. He catapults you way beyond where you ever could have been. I never would have realized that, that my road to get in the perfect will of God for ministry was to step out of ministry and to go to work, go back in the corporate world as a manager trainee for Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I would have never thought that. But had I not done that, I wouldn't be here today. Never been to Omaha before. Now go over to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6 in verse 2. Hallelujah. We're not going to get in a rush today. You guys will come back next Sunday. Praise God. Look at what it says in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 2. It says... You are snared with the words of your mouth. So, how do we get stuck? Not by people, even though it looks like it sometimes. Not by circumstances, by your words. You're snared with the words of your mouth. You're taken with the words of your mouth. See, what does Matthew say in Matthew 12, I think, verse 37? By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Matthew 4.4 4 says, we went through this last week, that man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Well, what are those words in John 6.63? 6, My words are spirit and they're life. So this is so very important. If you want to stay away from snares, if you want to stay away from being stuck or caught, watch your words, Right? So let's jump over to uh, Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Hallelujah. We're going to look at verse 2. In Proverbs 13, 2, it says, A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. And then it says this in verse 3, He that keeps his mouth keeps his life, but he that opens wide his lips and speaks out of his emotions, now it doesn't say that, I added that, <laughs> shall have destruction. But you know, have you ever opened wide your mouth? We better curse those words so that they don't produce anything. Amen? Amen? So be careful about just opening wide your lips. Nope, a, a man of God, we're going to see, will look down in his heart 
and then let his heart teach his lips what to say. You know, when Jesus, they brought him a woman caught in adultery, which was kind of interesting because really to commit adultery, it, it takes two, doesn't it? But I have no idea where the guy was. Sounds like a setup to me. But they bring this woman, and they're all standing around. And according to the law, according to the law, you know, she should be stoned. Actually, they both should be. So this was obviously a setup. Jesus is writing stuff. He's kind of writing stuff in the dirt. Now, if you've ever been in Israel, you know, we'll always say, well, he was writing all their sins. Listen, it's just rock and dust. If, uh, those, those, those religious leaders would have had to have eagle eyesight to go, oh my gosh, it's upside down and it's 10 feet away. But I could read. No, I, I think Jesus was probably just scribbling just looking down on the inside of him. Okay, Father, what do I say? They were spurring him on. If you look at the Greek, right, uh, the way it reads in the Greek, they were pressing him. Speak, tell us, what, what do you think? He, wasn't, he never was pressed. Nobody ever caused him to speak until he was ready to speak. Because he knew life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right? And so if you look at Jesus, he always had the perfect thing to say. Didn't he? Do you know that you and I are to always have the perfect thing to say? Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 18, though, since we're here in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20. It says it again. A man's belly will be satisfied by the fruit of his lips or the fruit of his mouth. How are you going to be satisfied? By what your mouth says. Stop trying to satisfy yourself with other things. They don't satisfy. Outward things will not satisfy you as a believer. You and I are to be led only by the inside, never the outside. We're to be satisfied by the inside, not the outside. When we're satisfied in the inside... Things on the outside, we can enjoy them so much better, but they're never going to satisfy us. Satisfaction comes from the inside. You're going to be satisfied by your mouth. Isn't that interesting? So in other words, you can live a life and be totally satisfied all the time. Wouldn't that be awesome to just get up every morning and just be satisfied? Do you know you can do that? Just speak the word of God. Don't speak how you feel. That's all you got to do. When you stand before God, you're not going to be able to say, oh man, it was just so hard. God would go, why? Why did you decide to make it so hard? It, if he says it to you like he said it to me, he's like, Tony, uh, you need to get over yourself because ministry is really hard when you're working and I'm not working. And I'm like, oh man, you're not working? What am I doing then, right? That's, a, that's ridiculous. No, no, we want to work out what he's working in. I want to say what he's leading me and stirring me to say. The Holy Spirit, he's the master. And, and you think I'm a talker? He is a talker. Man, he's wonderful. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, with the increase. Notice our lips are to speak increase. With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. If you're speaking decrease, it's impossible for you to be filled. Got to get that. This is, now remember, this is only God's word, which is forever settled in heaven. It never, ever changes, never passes away. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't even matter if you don't believe it. This is what we're going to walk in. So we're believers, thank God. We believe it. Amen? So then we go on, and then he brings clarity to this. The reason why you're going to be filled and satisfied with the fruit of your lips, because death and life are in the power of the tongue. It's the Hebrew word yod. That word power, it not only means power, but it means direction. Death and life are in the direction that you point your tongue. And there's, it's, see, the power is in the tongue. It doesn't say the power of death and life are in your tongue. It says 
Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Death and life are not the power, your tongue is. Isn't that interesting that the word of God is full of life and power, but if you choose to speak something different, right? The power of God is only to, the power of God only comes out of the word of God when it's voice activated. As we speak out of our heart, it's only towards us who believe. If you don't believe it, and let me say this, and, and boy, this is, you, you should write this down. If you're not speaking it, you don't believe it. Well, I know I'm living like this, but I really believe. No, you don't. So you need, to, you need to submit your life to the word so that you can actually believe it. Does that make sense? What you're looking at is what you're saying. And if you've got secret sin in your life, this is what's happening. Your self-talk all the time is how awful you are and how horrible you are. And it creates so much inner turmoil in you that what do you do? You're a wrecking ball with your wife, with your kids, at your job, in your life, because you're just so unhappy. And here's the good news. You can change all of it Amen. by just forgetting all that nonsense and just starting to speak the word of God. See, here's the cool thing about the word. You don't have to try to make this happen. You focus on Jesus and you get so full of the word. When the word gets in abundance, Matthew 12, 34, it will come out of your mouth. Isn't that good news? So just be who you are. That's why we must awaken to righteousness. Wake up. The Bible talks about revival. Well, what's revival? Is it people getting saved? No. Revival, that's a result of revival. Who's being revived? Us. What does it mean that awakening will enter, will bring in a revival? When the church wakes up and revives, the world will come in here. You can change your whole life by changing your words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen, if you're hurting, this is what you do with all of that. You give it, you humble yourself, and you give it to God. Your body was not made to carry it. If you're carrying a care, God can't. But if you'll give it to him, he will take care of it. And then you just speak the word. Oh, your flesh will give you a problem. Because see, the language of faith is what? Calling those things which be not as though they are. Well, your, your mind and your flesh is going to have a problem with that until you start renewing your mind. Your flesh will always have a problem with it, but when your mind is in line with your spirit, oh man, you'll just slap your flesh and it'll come in line. It just will, right? Because it, 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 it just, majority wins. So the problem in the church today, in all of our lives, is if we have an unrenewed mind, we're going to have an, by, by default, we have an undeveloped spirit, so now we're going to have uncontrolled flesh. But if we have, if we're growing spiritually and we're, we're growing and maturing on the inside, we're having a renewed mind, and now we'll be able to, we're never going to get our flesh saved. God's going to do that whenever he gives us a glorified body. It won't have this nature in it anymore. That'll be really nice. Can you imagine the relationships that are going to be restored in heaven? Right? We're going to go, oh, wow. We missed 20 years that we could have had a fellowship. But because we're in heaven and because we're forgetting those things which are behind, we'll be like, well, whatever. Who cares? Let's go. We're going to spend millions of years together, right? So it'll all be good. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So let's keep going. Go over to uh, Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. Look at verse 23. It says this, Whoso keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from trouble. Has your soul ever given you trouble? Do you know inner turmoil? When we say inner turmoil, that's in your soul. When you're unhappy in your soul, inner turmoil will always cause interpersonal conflict and it will always divide you from where God has you. So if you want to get, get rid of all that inner turmoil, 
if you want your soul to be at peace. You know, I mean, there's hurts in this life. We suffer loss of loved ones, all these things, but our mouth can bring comfort to us as we speak his word. His words are life, and the washing of the water of the word, it, it literally will calm you. If you find yourself overwhelmed, just start speaking the word, and, and I'm telling you, it will leave. Pastor, that is great preaching. Man, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to do that today. I mean, if you just did that, you would never have to put up with feeling bad. It would be so short-lived because the word of God will just, it just lifts you. We try to do that with music. And people go and it's a Christian song and it, it talks about how that my, my heart's been ripped apart and all these things are happening to me. But, but God is still good. And, and so we feel a little bit better. But then when we turn the song off and walk away, we feel bad again. But if we'll, if, we'll, if we'll listen to Christian music that's declaring what the Word of God says, that'll help us. Because what will it do? It'll connect with the Scripture. And when we walk away, we just, Father, I thank you that you always cause me to triumph. Father, I thank you that you restore my soul. Right? As I implant your word in my heart, it brings salvation and wholeness to my soul. I thank you that your peace is mounting guard over my heart and over my mind today. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about this anymore, but I'm just in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I've made this request made known to you, and I thank you that your peace rules in my life. As you speak those words the power of God comes on the scene and it starts bringing that peace. Does that make sense? Because Jesus is watching over his word to perform it. Look at what this says. Psalm 39, verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. Now let's look at this. If you take heed to your ways, what you're doing, it will affect what you say. So many times, another way to say this is you're saying the wrong thing because you're either doing the wrong thing or you're in the wrong place. So let's learn from the principle from God's word here. If you stay in the right place, in the right environment, it's going to be a lot easier for you to speak right. Think about at church, right? Does anybody freak out at church the way you maybe freak out at home? I mean, I don't know, maybe that, I don't know if that's anybody. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. But, but if you notice, when you get around a lot of believers, you think, well, is it because I'm fake? No, it's because every one of you today brought a supply of the Spirit of God in here. It's what created an environment for his presence so that the worship team can do what they do. They're just, they're just worshiping God, but they're, I mean, can you just sense the anointing that they're, because you're pulling on it because of that supply. And when we get in this environment of the supply, it's so easy to believe God for things. It's easy to speak right. You know, you don't sit here in church going, man, I just hate this person. No, you do, you're like, oh, you know, I, I really... I'm just going to pray for restoration in this relationship. Why? Because you're in the right environment. So this really reveals this. And then it says this, I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Get around a lot of people that are not walking with God. And even though you're a born-again, spirit-filled believer, you, your speech, you'll be tempted so you gotta sometimes it's like you gotta have a bridle you know i'm gonna okay i'm, I'm in a i'm in an environment now i'm around the wicked so i'm around the wicked so that i could be light but i can't come off judgmental i can't come off like i'm good and you're not so i need to bridle my tongue so that i say the right thing a word in due season 
Sometimes we'll have a server and you could tell when they find out I'm a pastor, which normally takes minutes, <laughs> right? Before the entree comes, they know I'm, I'm a pastor uh, or they'll at least know I'm a Christian. But I'll tell her, I'm like, this person has trouble with pastors. So I'll go back to that restaurant. Right? I've even gone back there and said, hey, is so-and-so working? Can I sit in their section? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, what do I do? Right? There was one that was a pastor's daughter, grew up. Wasn't in church. And you could just tell she just kind of like, hi, what, what can I get you? Please don't talk to me. Right? I mean, she didn't say that, but you know what I mean. So just would just kind of just, you know, be nice to her, tip well. That's, that's always a big thing the Lord always prompts me to do. And then one day I was leaving, and I was with somebody, and you probably find this hard to believe, uh, but like we, we met for, for a breakfast meeting, and, you know, we almost probably should have stayed there for lunch. Right? You know, yeah. Torian would probably understand what I'm saying right now. We've done that before. Some of the youth... But we were there for a long time, and, um, you know, servers make money by moving tables. So, you know, we, we tipped really well on the check, but then, then the Lord prompted me to go give her, like, an extra $20. And so I just walked up to her and said, hey, I go, out of respect for you, you've given us great service. We sat here a long time, you know, and everything. I just, I just I want to bless you with that. And, and she... After that moment, everything changed. I'd come in there, hey, you know, my dad's going through some stuff in ministry. Will you pray for him? She even hugged me. Right, I was hilarious. Right in front, you know, thank you so much. Boom, just hugged me one day. I'm like, yes, it's National Hug Your Pastor Day. I like that. So, but, but, you know, the Holy Spirit will lead you in all of these things. It's so, so very important. I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. You, everything, you look, your smile, your mannerisms, everything about you is designed perfectly to yield all of your fruit in this earth. Everything. And the Holy Spirit will give you what to say, how to say it, and, and here's the cool thing, most of your witness will be saying nothing. It's a smile. It's your countenance. It's just the way, you know, I can't tell you how many times at restaurants people come up, hey, I'm, you know, I apologize, we've been kind of over, I've been overhearing, you know, kind of listening to what you're saying, and wow, it just blessed me. See, remember that your father always causes you to triumph, and he always causes you, or he, and he, he's the one who does it, he will leave a fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere you go. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's that supply that you have. This is why the word says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. Because you need to come here, not just not for you, but for others, so that they can lay hold of some things. And it's that supply that you bring. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. So now let's go over to Proverbs, or I'm sorry, Psalms. Let's go over to Psalm 17. Psalm 17, it says it really well too here. Psalm 17, and we're going to look at verse 4. In Psalm 17, 4, it says this. Now, now we're kind of coming down the road here. If you could hang with me, we've, we've got just about 10 minutes, I think. Right around there, not much more, probably even less maybe. Who knows? Uh, but we're, we're coming towards the end, so kind of hang in there. I'm going through some scriptures that God wants you to start meditating on, you know, as he leads you, different ones. It says in Psalm 17, 4, Concerning the works of men, by the word of my, of my lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Ooh. In the Old Testament... He's called Apollyon, Satan, the devil. Apollyon, he's called the destroyer. Apollyon means the destroyer. This is telling us our words can keep us from the paths of the destroyer. Satan walks around seeking whom he may devour, and this reveals why. He's looking for who he could devour. You know what, he's, you know what he looks for? 
He looks for your words. He listens to your words and go, oh, man, there's a candidate. I can devour them. So realize that your words can keep you from the paths of the destroyer. Isn't that good news? Our words. Well, we better go to Ephesians, otherwise I'm not going to get there. Let's just just jump over to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's bring this into the New Testament. And when you understand the New Testament, you can gain some wonderful things from the Old Testament. In Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 29, it says this, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now it's going to tell us what we should say. But that which is good to the use of edifying. The word edifying means to build up. The Bible says corrupt communication is stuff that does not build up. So if you want to speak right... You never want to say anything that will tear someone down. And everybody said, can we pause for a moment here and let's all go before the Lord and repent of some things, right? But the Holy Spirit will help us. And if you'll notice everywhere you go, God will give you words to speak to build people up. Never to tear down. Never. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, why? That it may minister grace to the hearer. Isn't that cool? That you and I as believers, the grace of God is his ability to help that person. I can literally with my words minister grace that helps people. My speech is always to do that. Could you imagine... I'm telling you, do you like the environment here? Yes. Isn't it amazing? It's wonderful. Why is that? I mean, I walk around here and I talk to you. Do you know people are just building each other up all over the place? And, and it's wonderful. And God wants you, see, I know that's going to be going on in your personal life. And if you mess up with that, here's a big thing. Let's say you say something wrong to somebody at work. Don't be afraid to just walk up to them and go, hey, you know what? I said this. First of all, please forgive me for that. That was wrong of me to say. I was speaking out of just some junk in my own life. I don't mean to say that to you. Please forgive me. I, I, I've done that to people. People that don't know the Lord, it'll blow them away. It's like, what? Sometimes they don't, well, I don't even know what you said because they live in junk all day, right? <laughs> but I'm telling you, It'll keep you sensitive. If you have a problem with lying, I learned this from Keith Moore. If you have a problem with lying, the greatest thing you can do is when you tell a lie, you, like if, if I'm talking to you and I, I tell a lie, oh, you know what? I need to tell you, I apologize and I'm so sorry. I just lied to you. <laughs> do that once, you won't ever lie. Because that's flat. I mean, it's embarrassing to me even to use that as an example. Little, you know, but, but, but here's the thing. My words keep me from the path of the destroyer. My words bring life, bring fulfillment. It keeps me on my path. So at all costs, I want to speak right. Amen? Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It's real interesting that verse 30, right after that, it says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. It grieves him when we don't talk right. So we don't want to grieve him. Now, when you grieve him, he just kind of backs off. He's still there. He still loves you. And he's so positive, he's waiting for the next opening. And, and all of a sudden, you'll start seeing bumper stickers and, and, and billboards, and, and everything will start speaking to you about, okay, I need to get this right. And the minute you go, you know what, I said this, Father, I just repent of that, he starts talking to you again. Okay, great, because he's not grieved. 
He doesn't hold things. You know, God just forgives. So know that. Amen? Has this, this helped you today? I believe there's an anointing on it. If you'll get your words right, and, I, and I, you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir because we're all, I mean, I sense so much hunger here that just you guys want, I want to live for God, and it, it really is a blessing to me. God's doing a great work here. But you know, guys, we got to get ready because this isn't going to be a, 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 like a gradual thing. You're going to come to church one day and not have a seat. And there's going to be people here that you're going to be going, whoa, we're, did we just move our church to Hollywood and Vine in, in Los Angeles? You know, we, we don't know what we're going to expect, but I'm telling you, when the church just simply starts being who we are, the world's going to run to the church because we're going to have the answer. And the answer is not who we are, it's who he is. Amen? But remember, God wants you walking in freedom because you can't give freedom or produce freedom if you're not free. So he wants you walking in this, and he's going to help you in a big way. This is truly a year where you're to break out of some stuff that's been in your life a long time and, and so that he could bring breakthrough in your life. Amen?